Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. I'm just going to ask you to take your seat, please. We'll start in uh, one minute from now. Thank you. Well, dear colleagues, thank you very much for coming to the NRI's coordination session. My name is Alia Gengo, and um, I think the majority of you do know me, and I, I think, know the majority of the faces here. Um, but uh, just for the record, I work at the IGF Secretariat, and my primary responsibility is to um, engage with the national, regional, sub-regional, and youth IGFs and uh, work on advancing the, the local processes and the integration into the global IGF. As you know, the coordination session represents an open work meeting between all the NRIs, all other community members interested in the NRIs work. 
between the, uh, our colleagues, representatives from UNDESA, which you know is the institutional home in the UN of the IGF, the chair of the MAG, and the IGF secretariat. Uh, I will not be moderating this session. I will be just a rapporteur for this session. I think it's also very important for you that aside of knowing me as uh, kind of the contact person on a daily basis, that you know the rest of the team. So uh, the key person that's running the IGF Secretariat and of course uh, other, or ad, other colleagues senior um, in senior management, our director, and of course I believe the chair you know. So with that, I will hand over to, to Chengetai. Chengetai is, uh, is, is actually my supervisor and uh, leading, is leading the IGF Secretariat. So Chengetai will be moderating this session. I think the agenda uh, is, was shared with all of you. It's been built in a bottom-up manner by all NRIs a few months ago. And uh, hopefully we will have a good discussion. Thank you, Chengetai. Uh, thank you very much, Anya. Um, looking on the table, I think I think almost all of you know me. Uh, I don't see any new faces, so um, welcome and thank you to this meeting. And I also like to take this opportunity to thank Anya for her tireless work that she's done um, throughout since she came. Mm -hmm. Before she came, I think we had about 60 NRIs, and then when she came, it just shot up in a short manner of time. So it just shows how hard she works, and she's actually lost her voice this week because she's been working so hard. But thank you very much. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. And as you know, I mean, we have, I think, a very good communication between us. There's the bi weekly meetings that we have online with the NRI uh, coordinators. And when we go to meetings, we also meet. If we go to an ICANN meeting, we have an NRI meeting, etc. So I think that's very good. And the NRIs have also contributed to the work of. Um, the IGF Secretariat, the MAG work, and the stuff that we are producing for the Internet Governance Forum. Now, um, I would also like, um, Anya has um, introduced the panel. Uh, we do have Lynn Santamore, I mean, whom you all know is the MAG chair, and we also have the director um, from UNDESA, from the Department of Public Institutions and Digital Governance, uh, Mr. Joang Zha, who is um, working with us and he is supporting us and pushing us also to um, integrate and to um, communicate with the um, national and regional initiatives and it's uh, mostly because of his drive as well and his commitment to the national and regional initiatives and to capacity building at a local level as well, that we've been able to do new things this year. And um, with that, I'd also like to show you these two <laughs> in the corner here, whom uh, are also behind us and also work and contribute to the work. Um, they're, they're not really public to you, but with us, we work together every single day and uh, we talk to each other and they help with all manner of things with the IGF Secretariat and also in the New York side, pushing papers and making, thing, making sure that things are done. So this is Wyman, Kwok, and also Dennis Souza as well. Just wave your hands <laughs> in case you don't know. So, uh, so this is the team and also, if you feel that you need to talk to anybody, uh, we just, you don't have to just talk to Anya or myself. You can talk to them as well. And of course, you can also talk to Juwang. He's very um, approachable. So we're here to help and to communicate and to help build a better internet governance structure and, and understanding. So with that, I would like to give the floor to um, the director, Juwang Zhao, to say a few words. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chiang Kai. Um, I'm just looking around uh, to see colleagues, and I, this uh, banner catches my attention. Uh, IGFs uh, organized around the world, a multi-stakeholder, open, transparent, inclusive, non-commercial, and bottom-up. Uh, no words can summarize what NII is than these five words. So I don't know whether it's, it's Anya or somebody else who put these words together but it's well done. And that's probably something that I'm going to just to, to outline uh, in the next few minutes. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody here. And uh, 
in a way, I want to say that you are probably the heroes uh, of the expansion of the IGF around the world, because you know you most of you do not get any funding support from the UN, and most of you take this as work of passion. Uh, with you, your leadership, your initiative, uh, you're becoming our closest allies, our biggest champions in advancing the cause of the IGF. And I think, uh, uh, as Chang and I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, you know, the last time when I was able to attend uh, a meeting like this, there were about uh, 50, 60 uh, NIS, and a few years later, it uh, more than doubled. And it, it does show that there is the desire across the globe to be part of the IGF process, and also does show that uh, the trend for the broader participation uh, from the grassroots is strong, and hopefully next time we will meet, the number will go up uh, even higher. Um, let me just say a few things why we think the NIs are extremely important. Number one, um, it's a great education opportunity, and from our side, it's a great uh, capacity building opportunity, because through you, uh, the general public understands more why IGFs are important and what is at stake and how their lives, livelihoods are affected by the IGF. So this is a great education opportunity and uh, that is why we're very much behind this. Uh, we got some funding support from the partners and uh, over the last, this, this past year, I will just very quickly um, go through the list with the funding support from our partners, we're able to support um, the Asia-Pacific Regional IGF, uh, Gambia National IGF, Chad National IGF, African Regional IGF, uh, Haiti National IGF, Nepal National IGF, Zambia National IGF, Malawi National IGF, and Burkina Faso uh, National IGF. I hope that some of the colleagues who organized uh, uh, these IGFs will be able to share uh, the experience with us. And I also want to assure our uh, uh, funding partners, our the donors, that these uh, selection of the IGFs and the use of the funds uh, went through a very rigorous review process at the UN headquarters in New York. In New York, we, had, uh, we continue to have this uh, committee called the Small Grants Committee and the members of the committee reviewed carefully the application of the selection process, and they came to a decision. And uh, the grants at, is actually carried out through a written uh, exchange of, of uh, letters, and so it's very properly documented. Mm -hmm. I hope that um, our um, donor partners who support the IGF and provide contributions to the IGF Trust Fund will be inspired by what you are doing and uh, put more resources into your endeavors. Now, so uh, a few words on how we can support you. Uh, of course, number one, uh, we will work with MAG members, uh, with our counterparts in the broader IGF community to continue mobilize funds in support of you. Uh, it is probably no exaggeration to say that uh, without the small amount of support, uh, $3,000 for the national IGF, $10,000 for the uh, Asia Pacific IGF. Uh, without this small support, some of the IGF may not have taken place. So that is the bottom line of the importance of this capacity building fund. And number two, we will also uh, make use of the uh, efforts of the MAG members. Uh, some of the MAG members we talked to they indicated that they will be willing and to participate in, in your national IGF, in the regional IGF, uh, to provide uh, support and inputs into uh, your work. And uh, on the part of the Secretariat, thanks to Enya, uh, we are soon going to uh, put out a compendium uh, uh, of the national and regional IGF and use IGF. And this compendium, uh, it essentially relies on you for put on your inputs, uh, but I we think that once we put out the compendium, it is much easier for our partners to see you, to to reach out to you, and to get in touch with you 
and that will be a tool uh, of outreach and of, of mobilizing of funds of support. And finally, I also hope that while keeping your national regional uniqueness, uh, there will be also a better alignment of your national regional IGF with the global IGF in terms of the issues to be discussed so that the outcome of your national regional IGF can be organically integrated into the global IGF. So these are the few remarks I want to share with you and I want to in closing emphasize again that we are very much behind you. And uh, as some of the champions, if national regional IGF are work of your work of passion for you, they are the same to us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Joan. Now I will give it to the mic chair, Lin Saint Tomo, please. Have the floor. Mm. Thank you, Chengatai and Anya. I'll be quite brief because we've got a really full agenda and I think it's really important that we hear from as many of you as possible. Um, I would just like to first start off by thanking everybody for all of your efforts, um, not only, of course, your, your very obvious local efforts, but also your efforts here with respect to the main session that was organized by the NRIs, to the collaborative sessions, to all the other sessions you've either participated in or provided resource to, and in particular, for all the effort you give to various surveys and requests for support and help and participation from all the activities across the, the IGF. I know sometimes it can be overwhelming, um, and Anya and I will talk a little bit about how much we should do, but I always think it's not appropriate for us not to ask, because the decision ought to be yours with respect to which activities you choose to participate in, which ones are important to you, and which ones you would find useful. So um, I, I seriously hope you don't feel like you're kind of overtapped, if you will, for support and input but that is primarily wanting it to be your decision, which things you choose and, and you participate in, and not some pre-filter that happens at the MAG level or at, at the secretariat level. Um, that, that wouldn't be appropriate for a number of reasons and certainly wouldn't support uh, you know, a bottom-up um, focus. Um, you all know this is my penultimate day as the IGF MAG chair. Tomorrow will be my last day. And Henriette Esterhausen is coming in from civil society, and I know she's known to many, many of you. I understand she actually had a conflict for this meeting, which is why um, she's not here as well. But, um, I mean, she will provide strong, vibrant leadership, I'm sure, and I think, you know, only better and better things with respect to the NRIs and their relationship both to the MAG and obviously to the Secretariat and all the, the IGF activities. So really just from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to thank everybody for everything you've done locally and to support the MAG and to support such a great activity here this year and past years as well. And um, turn it back to Chengatai and Anya so we can really get your input and participation in. Thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you very much, Lynn. Um, now, as you know, we have... Um, we, I think, uh, the secretary to receive about um, two or three inquiries a week, actually, of people um, trying to form the national and regional initiatives, etc. And Anya or myself, we go through um, the requirements. And um, I'd like, just like to announce that we do have new ones coming on, like the Honduras IGF and the Ivory Coast IGF. And here we would uh, have the. China IGF, and I think we have Feng here who would like to say a few words. Please go ahead, Feng. Uh, thank you very much, Cheng Tai. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, my name is Guo Feng from uh, the uh, China Academy of Information and Communication Technology, which is CICT of China. It is my great honor to participate in this uh, NRI's session. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, update you the China IGF. So uh, today, the rapid development of information technology uh, has created new ways of production, new space for people, people's life, open new horizons of governance, and enhance people's ability to understand and shape the world. But meanwhile, in cyberspace, we also face a number of new issues and challenges such as security, stability, 
digital divide and cybercrime and terrorism. So this is why we think the UNIGF is meaningful. And uh, this is why we start the China IGF processes and join the global IGF family, which is a really honor. So in July, the CICT and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of China and uh, the Internet Society of China jointly launched the China IGF initiative to start the China IGF processes. So uh, the China IGF is aiming to uh, serving as a platform for the government, private sectors, technical communities, and other stakeholders uh, through the way of bottom-up, multi-stakeholder, open transparency, and inclusiveness. China IGF encourages all stakeholders to play their role in internet governance to safeguard uh, cybersecurity, upgrade the ind industrial development, and boost the vigorous development of the digital economy. At the same time, we, as the China IGF initiate, uh, will also build a bridge for the Chinese community to participate in the UN IGF processes. Uh, the China IGF would like to uh, strengthen its interaction in the UN IGF processes. Uh, so uh, to uh, contribute the uh, uh, global internet governance uh, and uh, solving the global cyber space issues. So in June this year, the UN's high-level panel on digital cooperation published the report uh, putting forward su su suggestions for IGF improvement, known as the IGF Plus. So the China IGF, uh, together with the Chinese internet community, will continually bring in various efforts to participate in IGF improvement. China will also enhance cooperation and uh, to enhance the uh, interaction with other countries, economies, and regions, share China's achievements in the development of the internet, make positive contribution to the global network security and development, uh, to strive to achieve the goal of development outcome and responsibility, and blaze apart uh, the path uh, of mutual trust and co-governance. Uh, so, uh, what we call a China Multi-Stakeholder Steering Committee, MSC, will be established later on, which, is, uh, which will be composed of members from governments, private sector, academia, and civil society. Our official website has been preliminarily set up and on the track of continuous update and improvements. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, building a peaceful, secure, trustworthy, prosperous cyberspace requires joint efforts of all countries and all sectors of the society. So let's uh, create a peaceful, secure, open, cooperative environment and build a community of shared future in cyberspace to benefit the people of the whole world. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Fen, and we welcome you to the family, and we look forward to collaborating with you from now on. Thank you. Um, the, fourth, the third item on the uh, agenda is the su sustainability of the NRIs. Um, as you know, one of the most important functions of the NRIs is capacity building, especially at home at the national and regional levels, and sometimes we do have... Um, summer schools and capacity building workshops attached to the NRI meetings. Um, and there's always the difficult question of funding and funding mechanisms. Um, as um, you've just heard, um, at the IGF we've tried, uh, with our, the, the limited money we have, to help with that funding a little bit with the IGF grants, and hopefully we can continue next year in doing that, and also providing support, such as use of our um, virtual meeting platform, Zoom, mailing lists, and I think we have one or two websites that we are hosting as subdomains on the um, INCA forum website at the uh, IGF Secretariat, so we try that. But it is still uh, a very big issue that we need to um, discuss and to see uh, what we can do. 
um, to provide more funding, whether it's be international funding or even uh, local funding for the um, IGF initiatives. The second point is um, also with the outcomes of the NRI, how we can work together to publicize the outcomes of the NRIs, because with the NRIs, which has the advantage from the global IGF, is that you can um, have your um, policy considerations at a local level, and these can directly affect um, how laws are made at the local level, which we don't at the global level. We act as a secondary order effect. Pe people have to go home and then do it in their institutions. But at the local level, you can have a direct f effect, which is um, also one of the reasons why we want to encourage the national regional initiatives. And it also helps in um, policy coherence across the globe as the internet doesn't really respect um, borders as such. So um, we have a question and answer session about these topics. Um, should, yes, please. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I am A. Sambuzlur Rahman, member Bangladesh uh, Internet Governance Forum. I have the privilege to engage with IGF process from 2006. So very honored to speak here to, to the afternoon, uh, some couple of points. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, His Excellency Hassan Lokinu, Chairperson Bangladesh IGF, uh, and also Secretary General M. Konu, Secretary General of Bangladesh IGF. Okay. I would like to brief regarding Bangladesh IGF. We organized Bangladesh IGF on uh, 16 November. So just a couple of minutes, I, I will brief you regarding the session. So uh, we uh, accommodate, we try to accommodate uh, multi-stakeholder participant, 150 participant participated there, government, media, civil society, academia, corporate sector uh, participated uh, there. And our first session was Bangladesh Youth IGF. So uh, from ethnic side, uh, uh, Asia Pacific Information Network, EPNIC, one of the representative director general also joined there of EPNIC. And we have an opening session, ministers, secretary joined there, and uh, sh sh uh, internet governance perspective on current state of the future, assuming the SDG uh, in the digital age. This is the opening session, Shiroram. Our next session was emerging technology, especially IoT, big data, blockchain, we discussed there. And uh, next session was freedom of expression uh, in digital transformation. Can common citizen civil society make it voice heard and protecting rights? We dedicated this session for the uh, freedom of expression related issues. Uh, uh, next session was, has internet brought paradigm shift in the politics? We, we invite a couple of politicians in our country in this session and very good discussion. Has internet uh, 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 changed the political paradigm? like this. And the uh, last session was closing session. That was also a very good session called Internet Governance in the Era of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. So that way, basically, we organized our Bangladesh IGF. Uh, I would like to now, I would like to fully endorse the Secretary General high-level panel on digital cooperation report. I think it is, it's a very, very good report. And at the same time, there are room for the further improvement, maybe. Because in recent years, NRI, according to our DESA representative, thank you very much, sir, for your comments regarding NRI, uh, have developed and expanded in organic ways uh, uh, that have helped strengthen and democratize internet governance at national and regional level. The IGF plus model does not seem uh, to address the role of NRI uh, in any way. Uh, we have question on how they would link with the help dex, incubator, accelerator, and other aspects. I have some concern in this regard, three concerns. One is, what is the relations between NRI and IGF secretariat in future? So we need to uh, discuss or we need to suck out this type of some uh, guideline like this. 
what is the relations between NR, NRI and RI? So country uh, IGF, how uh, communicate with the regional IGF? Because uh, they have to have some communication protocol like this. Third one is IGF plus. What is IGF plus? Uh, uh, we have no clear and crystal uh, idea regarding IGF plus model. So I think uh, need to some discussion regarding the what is IGF model and uh, what is the component of the IGF model like this. Uh, I would like to conclude here some impact, uh, expressing some impact of the Bangladesh IGF for, for your humble uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, say, uh, this is the impact of the Bangladesh IGF last couple of years. Uh, policy advocacy with ICANN for top level domain in Bangla. Now we have a top level domain. So this uh, advocacy started by the Bangladesh IGF with the ICANN and under the leadership of our um, uh, chairperson. Now we have a top level domain in Bangla in Bangladesh. Second one is we engage the um, engage and involve concerned stakeholder, including government, with ICANN, new Brahmi generation, NBGP in Bangla. As a result, concerned stakeholder, including government of Bangladesh, involved and negotiated for the development root zone level generation. That is called LGR. So now Bangla in the LGR document. So this is our huge uh, two success in this area. Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum, Forum also running Bangladesh School on Internet Governance Forum. So, um, 100, uh, 1,300, that means uh, 1,300 people basically join the Bangladesh School on Internet Governance uh, um, so far. Bangladesh IGF delegate participate in the UN IGF regularly and translate knowledge from regional to global IGF level and incorporate global knowledge to national and regional level through Bangladesh School on Internet Governance. So this is the uh, sum of impact of the Bangladesh IGF. Thank you very much for listening to me. Yes, uh, thank you very much. That's a, a very great example. And, um, and I'd like to congratulate you on the efforts that you've put in there. And, you know, 13,000 people going through the school. I mean, that's quite impressive. Thank you. Um, before sh we answer the questions, is there anybody else who wants uh, to take the floor? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Hello, this is Keisuke Kamimura representing for Japan IGF. Um, uh, we do share the similar concern that uh, our, our colleague from Bangladesh uh, expressed. Um, uh, we also want to know how the national and regional uh, NRIs and uh, global IGF are interrelated uh, in the near, in the, uh, in the future. Uh, after the reformation of uh, IGF uh, will take place. Um, so uh, this is uh, one point. And another point is um, Japan IGF has a very, uh, uh, what I call a thin model of running uh, the national IGF. Uh, we do have extensive discussion on various ICT policy topics uh, across the nation, but we do not, uh, it does not take place within the uh, Japan IGF framework. So we just pick up some notable figures from each uh, silo of discussion to the national uh, uh, Japan IGF, IGF platform. So that's we, what we are trying to do. So if the uh, reform of IGF will take place in the near future, uh, how Japan IGF uh, is, how should Japan IGF uh, connect ourselves to the global arena? So that's another concern that I, uh, I have now. Thank you. No, uh, thank you very much. Um, for the relationship between the national and regional IGFs and the global IGF, if we are to use that word, um, the national and regional IGF are independent of the global IGF, and we are still man maintaining that. We are just collaborating together, uh, working with our synergies, and also um, participating 
um, we learn from you and you learn from us. So it is not a hierarchical relationship at all. And the same goes for the um, regional IGFs and the national IGFs. It is not a hierarchical um, relationship. I mean, the discussion and debate that goes in the national level, of course, th there is a difference between national discussions and regional discussions because of the effect. Um, but it is still trying to discuss these issues, uh, these issues build some national consensus around some issues, so you know where you um, agree on, you know where you disagree on, and then also on the regional level. And then when we come to the uh, global meeting, we are better placed to um, participate in the discussions. Uh, so I hope that answers these two questions. As for what happens in the future, we don't know that because it is not set in stone. Um, there's still a discussion going on. And um, we had the review of the report. We had the, ses the digital corporation session on Tuesday. And this is still a discussion. So no, nothing has um, come. And I don't, I mean, for my personal point of view, I don't think there will be something that says, OK, from now on, you report to this and et cetera. I mean, we're, it's, it's a corporation, so we discuss and we amend and we adapt as we go on, as we get new information and as our needs change. Um, does anybody? No? no? Okay, yes, please, Sandra. Mm. Um, to address the concerns of my fellow colleagues from Bangladesh and Japan, um, we just had an uh, informational gathering of regional IGFs and it became evident that some of those elements that are in particular described in, recommendation, uh, sorry, in Chapter 4 and Recommendation A and B, speaking about this incubator and uh, accelerators and all these kind of things, that some elements they have different names, of course, are kind of existing in some regions and in some nations already. And therefore, I would personally recommend that uh, when these round tables are being set up now in the future, when we discuss the digital cooperation for the future, that uh, national and regional IGFs should be on these round tables because their experiences, might they be positive or negative, should definitely feed into the discussion. And you would have no better source than the national or the regional IGFs to feed them into. And to me, this became evident really today during the meeting. Uh, Anya will remember that. It was even at the very end. And I think we should take it from there and address the concerns of, the, uh, uh, of, of, my, my, of my colleagues. Thank you. No, thank you very much, Sandra. And I'm sure there's going to be room for input. Uh, it, it's an open process, as far as I understand it. Yes. Uh, um, I just want to echo what Sandra and, and Chengitai just said as well. And every time um, you know, I've been asked about IGF Plus and the various component pieces of it, I've said that all of those exist, or the ability to support those exists within the, the current IGF ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Um, they, of course, need additional resources and better funding. I also talked to the DNA that exists in terms of open, transparent, bottom-up processes and how that important that is. And I know that view is held by the MAG as well. So, I mean, I think f from a MAG's perspective, as, as the new MAG, I am not future committee, <laughs> the new MAG, but as the new MAG actually picks up some of this discussion, I'm sure they will share, a sub, share those same values and do whatever they can to continue getting those messages in from their perspective. And at the same time, it is really important that the NRIs themselves have their own voice and their own participation. And so it may be worthwhile thinking about how you might do that so that you get effective representation into those processes and effective kind of representation back into your own activities here, both in the IGF ecosystem and your national and regional and youth. Um, initiatives as well, but I think it's critically important, and so many of the pieces are already in place. Yes, please, Barak. Mm. Thank, thank you, Chengechai. My name is Barak Otieno from uh, Kenya IGF. Uh, first of all, th many thanks to the Secretariat and uh, UN DESA and the MAG Chair for the good work you've been doing. Um, I would like to speak to the issue of sustainability. 
of the IGFs. Uh, it's good that we are having many initiatives coming up, but I think the greatest challenge that is going to face us is sustainability. And I just wanted to share a possible solution in which as IGF coordinators or conveners, we could think of our processes as think tanks for providing solutions to our community. I may share maybe the case of Kenya IGF. This year, we've worked very closely with our parliament, both the Senate and the National Assembly. They have always turned to us whenever they wanted to um, reach out to the public, uh, test legislation, and in some cases, they have withdrawn legislation that was not popular with the public because it was not well thought. Uh, in some cases, uh, we've had um, a Data Protection Act enacted after more than eight years, and a Computer Misuse and Cyber Crimes Act. And um, a lot of these activities are being done by participants from the School of Internet Governance, which is in its fourth year. So we are seeing that um, there is more support coming because people feel that they, they are useful outcomes or outputs, or this forum can be relied on. Uh, and, um, and so I would like to encourage uh, the IGFs that uh, we turn ourselves into think tanks. And coming back to the, to the secretariat, now that we are thinking of a compendium, uh, I'm thinking that uh, maybe if we can find a way of um, showcasing uh, good things by writing, not just here we are speaking, and uh, we've been in so many meetings, uh, the memory is full. But now if we could be writing and uploading it on a website, uh, because I'm seeing, for example, in Kenya, we, we are having a challenge with um, legislative aspects around drones. Now it is illegal to own and to fly a drone, and uh, purely from a legal and regulatory angle. And as I sat through meetings, I wanted to really hear how have other countries done that? Practical things that we can be able to share with our parliamentarians. If we are talking about artificial intelligence and use cases, uh, can we find documents in a place on projects that uh, I can refer a farmer in a village, go to this website and implement this? So I think as we discuss, let's uh, see if we can have a portal or something where we can upload all these wonderful things that are happening in different countries and they can be used on the ground. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Barak. Yes, it, and it is true that um, if the local IGFs show their value, then of course they will receive more support. And yes, um, being a think tank and also with the com compendium and um, the sharing of good practices, it's also good so that we can learn from each other's experiences. Um, yes, very good points. Thank you. Uh, do we have anybody else who wants to take the floor? Yes, please. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Tabriz Jafarov from Azerbaijan. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate uh, at Tübingen University and I, I listened to the, to the speech of the Japan and Bangladesh representative. I think that uh, they are lucky to have, to have problems maybe, to have concerns like this. At least they have platform. IGF platform in their country because uh, we have not IGF use platform and also country platform in our country. Uh, and it means that uh, all the citizens of our country and have not any chance to participate in this initiative and in Azerbaijan maybe and I think that uh, most of the countries uh, I can say here that they have not really and first of all I think that we have to create we have to establish all the platforms in every country it means that every country will have chance to participate every country citizens will have uh, the chance to participate in this process nearly and after this after that maybe maybe we can we can we will have uh, so so important and also uh, conclusions on this issue and, and that's why i kind of ask you support us to create a national 
maybe uh, platform IGF in uh, in in our country in every country uh, it is so important for us and uh, after coming here and I heard that we have not national platform and it is so big problem for me and I think that it's a big problem for our um, country and internet society the, that's all thank you very much no, uh, thank you very much uh, for your input. Yes, I think um, we will try and we will also, um, and we have put on our website like the um, NRI toolkit, etc. And we're having, as I said, the um, small grants to help countries come up and um, establish their national processes. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the by We are ready to, I'm, I'm so sorry, and we are ready uh, to do anything to do everything on this issue and if you have will and also if you have support on this issue to us we are ready and I think that from today we have to start this process sure. from today Good. yeah yes <laughs> no, thank, thank you very much yeah we, we stand ready to assist. yes Jennifer please Thank you, Cheng Atai, for giving me the floor. Uh, my name is Jennifer Chung. I'm part of the Secretariat of the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. First of all, I would like to thank the IGF Secretariat very much for their gracious and very generous grant that they've given to APR IGF this year. They always do support us um, in person as well. Um, thank you, Cheng Atai, for coming to Vladivostok, um, somewhere that people don't usually think about when you think about Asia Pacific, but it is, is really on the far east of, of, um, of Russia. So with that, you know, I, I really want to also welcome uh, very much the new addition to our um, NRI family at China IGF. We look forward very much to their contributions, um, especially in the region. It would be very fruitful um, and, and exciting to hear developments, especially from China. Um, a, a very quick um, response to the colleague that just intervened on, on behalf of Azerbaijan. Actually, there is a youth internet governance forum in Azerbaijan that happened this year. I believe it might have been the first first one that was organized by the Ministry of Transport Communication yeah, yeah. and also UNDP. So if you wanted more information, I'm sure Anya or... There was forum, but there was no platform. Ah, uh, okay. I think that 2000, uh, 2012, maybe, uh, there was a forum, IGF forum in Azerbaijan, but, but the conclusion of this forum, uh, I cannot understand that why we, we, did, not, we, we did not create platform there. Just maybe for, for the record to note that, yes, indeed, there are a couple of colleagues are here from the Azerbaijan um, Steering Committee. Maybe I could connect you. And we actually met very briefly today just to discuss how to advance the process in terms of the outreach. Because obviously what you're stating relates to the outreach. Probably it's not known to everyone in the country that that unique process exists. So. We will work on it, and I will maybe uh, meet you after this meeting so we can uh, maybe set up a meeting or just chat briefly and connect you to the colleagues. Thank you. I think you also mentioned the Azerbaijan, because of course there was a global IGF in Azerbaijan um, back then as well. And I'm just taking that opportunity to say that um, we would welcome any other expressions of interest for future NRIs, uh, future IGFs. Um, in your country. So if you think there's a real possibility and a real interest, then you should contact the Secretariat or the incoming MAG Chair, because we have done that successfully in a number of countries with the support of, of the NRIs. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, yes, okay, we'll have Jennifer finishing, then we have Liana, and then we have Yulia. Thank you. Thank you, Shangatai. Yes. I just wanted to highlight that um, the grant that we received from IGF really enabled us to bring underrepresented stakeholders from around the region because Asia Pacific is a very, very vast region, very diverse and, mm -hmm. you know, ranging from developing to small island states to landlocked countries and also, you know, developing um, states as well. So without this grant, we would not be able to bring underrepresented uh, stakeholders to the actual forum. I think a lot of them do find the participation in person extremely valuable. In fact, because we have to move uh, host countries every year, it is always a, a question of you know the sustainability and the ability to be able to fund 
stakeholders who have not been able to come to the forum is extremely, extremely important. So a big thank you to that. And of course, looking forward to the next edition, which will be in a landlocked country. It will be in Nepal. So um, thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Liana, please. Thank you, Chengeta. Liana Galstan speaking, Armenia IGF. Um, so we, uh, we are lucky to have the platform and the IGF, um, the national IGF. We do that for the fifth year. And uh, we do a lot of capacity building programs, uh, especially for the youth participants. And uh, we had a School of Internet Governance, which we ran for three years. And the success of it, um, to me, was the establishment of uh, youth IGF, actually, for this year. So those uh, participants of the SEEK, uh, the, the School of Internet Governance that we have, the alumni, they get together and they uh, establish their own initiative and their own uh, dialogue within the youth. Uh, so this is a great um, advancement of dialogue uh, on internet governance that we have in a country. And uh, in terms of participation uh, in different stakeholders, we've been very lucky also to engage the parliamentarians. And uh, also that parliamentarians now uh, come for the uh, global IGF. And this is the, for the first time that ever from Armenian the parliament, uh, the members are participating. And this is also thanks to the German government that they put the fund for this and um, invite. And I hope that uh, from now on, they will be really engaged and do uh, the legislation and uh, take into account the bottom-up process from the uh, civil society and all the other um, uh, stakeholders. And uh, taking another opportunity in my head uh, as a CED uh, executive com committee member, um, I would like to also uh, brief that uh, we have a lot of um, capacity building programs there as well. So we run that for f uh, five years uh, in turn, and uh, we do have schools there as well, and which is the regional one, and that brings another value that we bring uh, participants from different countries and in which they do not have their own national IGFs as well. So bringing the youth and the fellows into this um, regional um, IGF, uh, bringing the um, um, the knowledge, raising awareness, and uh, then we uh, faced actually the, the result so that these people who come and uh, take in the knowledge in the school and the uh, fellowship program, they go into the back to their countries and they create the IGFs. So this boosts the dialogue within the national IGFs. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the Secretariat for the uh, support. And uh, Cengita, you mentioned also the, the platform, uh, the, the Zoom and the mailing list and uh, all that kind of technical support that giving Secretariat, this is really very useful uh, for, for, the, uh, for bringing up the community. Uh, thank you for that support. And uh, to Anya as well for the excellent coordination of the work that we're doing within the NRI. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Liana. Um, yes, you are, you are doing re really great work with the CDEC. And I think I was at the Bucharest uh, CDEC, right? Yes, yeah, and it was really amazing. Thank you. Please. Mm. Yes, thank you. Good yes. afternoon. My name is <clears throat> Julia Morenes from the Youth IGF Movement. As you know, the, we initiated this in 2011, the Youth IGF, actually, together with the uh, the MAG members of the 2011 at this time. And now, today, we are like, um, it's a kind of platform, because you mentioned something very important, the platform for, for the youth to be, you know, to have this all over uh, through the year. And uh, we are very happy to have more than 35 countries where we are helping and giving this platform. We discussed actually uh, beforehand, yeah. just uh, in the early afternoon, so just to know, to make, uh, to, to give this information to the Secretariat as well. we'll be happy in helping as well in bringing this, um, this knowledge and capacity on how to establish the platform and to work together yeah. because indeed the youth IGF um, Azerbaijan has been organized already uh, but this is more about the, um, the tangible sustainable platform as well so happy to for other countries as well if there is an interest happy in you know delivering this knowledge and methodology thank you
Uh, thank you, Leah. Yes, it's very important. Um, the youth are the future, so it's very important to engage them. And also, I was going to say something about the parliamentarians, that um, it was a great effort and many thanks to the German government for establishing this parliamentary track. And hopefully, within the national and regional initiatives, we can also invite the parliamentarians in as well, because they're in charge of making, of passing the legal instruments, the policy instruments in the country. So it's important that that um, they are made aware of the debates that are going on and get involved in the debates as well. Okay, we have Liana very quickly, and then we have that gentleman there, and then we have McKinney right at the end. So we'll do that in that order very quickly. Thank you very much, Chengita, mm -hmm. for this opportunity. Uh, mm -hmm. from, I'd like just uh, to share now the... Um, practice that we do have in CD, mm -hmm. uh, which I think maybe many colleagues will um, take that into account. We do have an election of the executive committee, uh, which we t brought up by the community, so that mm -hmm. we do have an election uh, committee taken up uh, from the community, and uh, we're putting the uh, election, the can <laughs> candidates, so this is an open process, and uh, we have that ro in a rotation. Mm -hmm. So just uh, lately, on these days when we are here, we finished uh, the election process and we have two uh, um, members of the executive committee to step in. Mm -hmm. So this is a quite an open process and we do have this established uh, two years back. Uh, and uh, those colleagues who would be interested, uh, we can share this experience with them uh, and to have this open process for everyone. Okay. Thank, you. Uh, thank you very much, Lynn. And sir, so, please. I can't. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, my name is Guilherme Alves. I'm from Brazil and I'm board member of the Youth Observatory, which is the Youth Special Interest Group of Intern Society. I would like to share a few remarks from our Youth Lucky Jeff mm -hmm. initiative. Um, this year we had our fourth event. Uh, the Youth Lucky Jeff is an event, uh, it's held specially, particularly as a day zero event from Lucky Jeff, which is the Latin America uh, regional meeting. And um, we seek to create this open space for newcomers and also to engage the young leaders from our region. And when it comes to our sustainability, uh, funding is an issue, of course, and we rely on support from uh, many organizations in the region, especially. And, uh, but because we don't have this regular fund, it's, every year is a challenge for us to help the, the event. Especially because we have this fellowship program, which is uh, aimed to uh, bring new leaders to the Lucky Jeff. And, uh, however, over the four years, uh, over the past years, we had almost 40 uh, fellowships, uh, fellows from our um, fellowship program from 15 countries in the region, and we still are trying to bring new people and new leaders from countries that we know that still do not have any, uh, many representation. Uh, and unfortunately, we have never been supported by the uh, intergovernance uh, support, uh, so, um, uh, foreign support association. Um, uh, but we, we're still trying to bring, to. Uh, expand event. It's a, a, a one-day event, uh, but we have this perspective, like this bottom-up perspective, uh, which is uh, means that our event, especially, uh, uh, we have breakout groups. So we are trying to bring the voices to the community, the Latin American community. But it's a, it's it's, a, it's still a challenge for us to keep the event coming every year. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, yes, it is very important, for, especially for newcomers, encouraging newcomers to come in. Um, Makan, please. Yes, uh, thank you all. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Makan Fai from the African IGF and the West African IGF and the Senegalese IGF. So I wear three hats, and uh, I think uh, the IGF Secretariat UN DESA and uh, IGF, GFSA, because uh, all of them have been uh, funding uh, the three elements I am referring to. We were also very honored to have Anya in the West African IGF meeting in July. Uh, last year, we had uh, Marcus with us in the regional IGF, and uh, this year we had uh, funding from uh, UN DESA, as uh, it was stated earlier. 
Uh, I just want to say that um, this seed funding we receive uh, brings sustainability to our uh, activities because this money, either they will tell you the place to put it right away, sometimes places which you didn't think of, like the UNDESA grant, which uh, will tell you to go and uh, make sure you bring women, you bring uh, underrepresented groups, and so on. So you are forced to do so, and then, of course, that will bring uh, uh, a big uh, opportunity for those people also for the uh, forum itself. Uh, trying to answer some of the questions which some people had uh, asked, giving the African example. Uh, well, we, we, there is no hierarchy, but uh, we try to make sure that there is the processes are uh, logical between the national, the regional, and the continental IGFs. Uh, and uh, we try to make sure that when you have a regional IGF, then all the countries at the region take part, and they present, and so on. And we try that make sure that OC from the regional IGF, we go to the continental one, that is African IGF, where people are represented. In fact, the African IGF, the representatives are from the regions. The regions are the ones who are coming up. So we try to have uh, some, um, uh, not hierarchy, but uh, uh, logical uh, operation. And from next year also, we are trying to make sure that the national IGFs are held, followed by the regional IGFs, and then we have the continental IGF, which will come uh, uh, before the uh, global IGF. That's what we are doing. And we, are, we have written this in paper, and we have prepared also a manual, uh, a toolkit which is called the Manual for the Development of the National and Regional IGFs in Africa, where we have put uh, information to assist countries to set up their national and their regional IGF and give them enough information to be able to, to move forward. That uh, Most of the information in that uh, toolkit was based in the global uh, IGF toolkit, of, uh, of, uh, NRI's toolkit, of course, but uh, we had some specificities and uh, 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 NRI's toolkit uh, uh, has been here for quite long. We looked at it properly. We we measure it and we took what we needed from it and we added some element of information which are relevant to the African continent. The toolkit is being used and is really helping uh, uh, our countries to, 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 to set up. And uh, during the last uh, uh, one year, we have at least five new uh, national IGF which uh, have been uh, created due to the impetus of uh, the promotion we are doing at the African level. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Makan. And yes, and that also underscores the importance of coordination and cooperation among the national and regional initiatives. And thank you. Um, I've been told that I have to move on to the next topic. So, oh, is there one more comment? Yes, please. Here you go. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is uh, Mr. Philip Johnson from Liberia. I'm representing the Internet Society Liberia chapter. Uh, let me take this time to extend my thanks to Angel and the Secretariat for the excellent coordinations and to the funders for getting me here in Berlin. Uh, as you know, Liberia's IGF has been down for a very long time. It has been inactive. Me and my organization are now taking the initiative to work with other stakeholders in uh, reactivating the IGF in Liberia. This forum has also given me this opportunity to meet some people from my region, experienced individuals uh, in the West African and African region. And I'm also counting on others here to true advice to assist us in reactivating our IGF, the Liberian National IGF. I thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your comments. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the next topic is um, why are the NRIs, why fund the NRIs? Um, in the crowd, we also have um, funders of the national and regional initiatives because um, it's, we can only fund very few and we only started this year, but um, national and regional 
IGFs are also funded by the IGFSA and other organizations like ICANN, ISOC, and here we have a few of them. So I would like to start off with AFRINIC, if you have a few words to say, please. A representative from AFRINIC. Okay, he didn't come, but they are great supporters and we do appreciate uh, the, the, the support that they do for the um, national and regional initiatives. They also support the IGF um, as well through the, the combined RRR uh, contribution that they give every single year. And then we have somebody from Affilius. Yes, please do. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, thanks Changatai. I'm Melinda Clem, I'm with IGF USA, but I'll speak today as a donor from the uh, Domain Registry Affilius. Uh, I'd like to highlight two reasons uh, that drive our support of IGF uh, with both the financial and human capital. Uh, the first is that we see IGF as a place that helps us um, achieve our mission of providing secure, stable, and reliable internet services. You know, the way that the internet operates and is managed is bigger than any one company or one country or line of code. And we have a responsibility to think beyond our immediate tangible roles in the work that we do and to share that knowledge and experience. Uh, because we do fully endorse the multi-stakeholder model of internet governance, uh, the IGF is an ideal forum to participate and advance in our efforts to secure one open internet. As a commercial entity, it's also a grounding experience. It's a place to see that the work that we do every day, that we can, you know, we can all sort of get caught up in our daily lives. But I come here and I'll, you know, participate in meetings and we see just how important the work it is and, and how maintaining a stable internet infrastructure helps achieve so many SDGs that we talk about here every, every year and throughout the year. Secondly, with uh, respect specifically to NRIs, as a multinational company, we, we also understand the unique distinctions of operating across the world while respecting local laws and, and customs and strategic objectives. Affiliates is supportive of multiple NRIs uh, to help advance those local and regional goals. I was honored this year, uh, at the beginning of the year, to assume a leadership role at IGF USA, and I'm proud of the work that we've done our diverse participant base, and the success of our annual meeting. The NRIs provide a, an important path to, to realizing and maximizing advantages of the internet and technology at a local level and meeting strategic uh, public sector goals. Finally, I'd like to close with uh, what I think is just a, an amazing side benefit. Uh, meeting so many passionate people and smart and technical uh, folks uh, that work so hard to achieve really great things. And I'm, I'm grateful and thankful for that. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Affiliates has also been a very long-standing um, donor to the IGF Trust Fund as well. So thank you. Um, ISOC? Yeah. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Alejandra from the Internet Society. So the first thing that I want to say is that um, we are the Internet Society. We think that uh, we really need local action to have a global change. So without the NIRs, this local action will never be possible. So we need to start from a bottom-up approach. So going there where all the decisions are actually made, get all the information, share all the best practices, listen to everyone in the room. And when I say everyone in the room, it's exactly everyone in the room. And only sometimes at local level, at the national level, regional level, we can have everyone. Once you are there, you can move forward and go to the global IGF and make your voice heard. I also want to say that at the Internet Society, we are not only providing funds like sponsorships. We do. But there are other things that we can also do and we are actually doing. I mean that, for example, we have fellowships. We can identify people that are talented and can be in the global IGS, but also in the North, national and regional IGS. So at the Internet Society, we support these people that we know that they are powerful and we can empower them and then go there and make an action. Also, we have capacity building. 
trainings. Liana mentioned that training. So internet society is also training people that are in the local and the national uh, IGFs. Of course, in the global, I, I guess you know that we have a very uh, big uh, group of um, uh, power, uh, powerful uh, youth people here that will be that have been trained. But it's not the only thing we are doing. We are actually training people locally. Other things that uh, I would like to highlight here is that we sometimes uh, we are actually at the internet society want to support for example being speakers on site because it's, it's something that is also uh, a support it's not just money but it, ca it costs sometimes so with this i want to say that uh, uh we believe that uh, the multi-stakeholder it's needed the multi-stakeholder is needed um we are not just giving money we are empowering our community because at the end those are the ones making the decisions and changing the world. The impact we need is global but it has to start locally. Thank you very much. No, thank you and um, we also would like to thank you for the multiple levels of support that you have for the IG ecosystem, not just us but you know we've met I think everywhere we've been there's always been an ISOC representative there so thank you. Um, next, we have um, ICANN. Andrea, please. Thank you, Shangatai, and thank you, thank you all for, for this very interesting session so far. So ICANN has been a long-standing, I don't know if to call it friend or lover uh, of the uh, NRIs, uh, sometimes even mother or father of NRIs. Uh, so we have a multi-layer relationship. Um, uh, at the global level, as you know well, at the regional level, at the national level. And sometimes uh, our support goes from direct funding to institutional support. Sometimes it really bootstrap. Former ICANN fellows, they start uh, learning about the national issue IGF in their countries and they do that. And we do that across the five continents. I believe that in ICANN is probably the largest uh, budget line of sponsorship and, um, and I hope and I believe we will continue to do so. What I, what I will uh, probably share with the rest of you also is that what we see along the years is that the commitment of the technical community has been there and during, but um, despite uh, um, our efforts, we see that the rest of the industry is not as supportive as we believe they should. In our small, um, uh, well, not that, not that small, but we try often to involve the rest of the DNS industry, so registry and registrars and the national CCTLDs, and they do participate, they do sponsor, uh, but the rest of the internet ecosystem, it gets quite a different uh, challenge. And that's something that I think it's upon us also to reflect, um, how to get the, the business sector, the private sector in the internet uh, realm at the local level also participate, because I think that will be something that is linked also with uh, the situation at the global level. And last point is that uh, we do use the NRI toolkit as also a guiding line for um, our uh, sponsoring of the local IGFs. Since now there is such a mushrooming, we cannot really go in detail sometimes uh, and see if that's a proper IGF. We do rely a lot on this, on this document. I really commend the work done, and I hope to, you will continue doing so. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Andrea, and you've made some very good points. And yes, we do try and th we, sh we should try and think more about how we can involve those others mm -hmm. that do not uh, participate or donate to the IGF. Thank you. Um, the next, I have RIPE NCC. Thanks, Jengatai. Um, yeah, my name's Chris Buckridge. I work for the RIPE NCC. I'm also um, a member of the Eurodig Association Board, so I'm not wearing that hat when I'm speaking here. I'm speaking a bit more about um, why the RIPE NCC is, is supportive and has been supportive of, of NRIs. Um, and, I mean, yeah, thank you for this session today. I, I think there's not really anything I can say about why we support NRIs that hasn't been said by others and probably more eloquently. So I'll, um, I'll do a very succinct summation of that. Um, I think primarily this, this week and some of the other workshops have really highlighted one of the reasons that um, we so strongly support it. And that's the, the, that a lot of 
the activity and the, the sort of really practical implementation has to happen at the national and, and sort of regional level. I've, I've been in workshops this week on, on cyber norms, on, on other human rights related things where essentially the outcome of the discussion was, yeah, we need to really build the national networks and, and work to an, implement these things operationally at that level. Um, so, and I, even a colleague from the Kenyan IGF before gave a really good example of how that national discussion really contributes to making better policy at the national level. Um, so, I mean, I think we see value in building the community through those, those kinds of activities. Um, and I think as an organization that is committed to engaging and communicating with all of the stakeholders in our service region, which is quite a big service region, um, it's, it's absolutely true that the countries where there is a stronger national community, a strong community that pulls together all stakeholders, it, you can have such, so much more productive a relationship and a, and a communication and cooperation there, and national IGFs can really serve to build, build that community. Um, so we very much see the value there. Um, I think to speak as a, as a funder here, I, th I think I'm not wouldn't be telling anyone around this table anything to say that um, setting up, maintaining, running a national IGF or any IGF is not straightforward. Um, it's there are challenges in terms of bringing very disparate parts of the community together. There are challenges in defining and sticking to a multi-stakeholder ethos and, and principle in when you're building that. I think it's very easy to sort of slip into a situation where one stakeholder group takes, takes the reins and runs with it and suddenly you don't really have a multi-stakeholder process. Um, for funders, for people who are, uh, or organizations that are giving money, um, that can be problematic. We, we obviously are committed to funding multi-stakeholder processes. Um, and so when there are those challenges, it can really be a problem um, for the national IGF. And I think that's one reason that coming together like this and developing those best practices, developing the communication to say where, there have, where it's been difficult to maintain um, or, or how strategies that um, people have successfully used to develop and maintain an, an IGF national model, that's, that's really important. I think Andrea mentioned the NRI toolkit and that's, that's one practical outcome that we've seen of that building best practices process. Um, I think others also heard me talk earlier today probably in the IGF Support Association discussion um, about the need to sort of synchronize the different work that's going on between funding for um, IGFs at the various levels and making sure that there is communication and coordination going on, which is not to say there hasn't been that, but to say that these are all dynamic, changing, shifting models and, and environments, and so there it's, it's needs to be an ongoing effort to make sure that that coordination happens and happens productively. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, well heard. Um, last uh, but not least, we have the IGF SA. Marcus, please. Yes, thank you, Chengatai. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, it's an interesting session, and the IGF SA is obviously very committed to supporting the NRIs. We were set up in 2014 with a scope, with the objective to support the IGF in all its appearances, be that at the global level, but also the national, regional IGF. We have provided support to the IGF Trust Fund, which is managed by UNDESA. But over the years, we have shifted gradually to prioritize the NRIs because we have felt that there is really need and the growth and Anya is to blame for it. She has really <laughs> led to a dynamism uh, that we just felt needed to be followed in order to encourage this growth and the spread of NRIs. And uh, also, we have an excellent uh, collaboration with the IGF Secretariat. We leave it to the IGF Secretariat to validate when we receive a request to say whether the IGF or the NRI who asks for some support has actually fulfilled all the conditions, has filed reports and lives up to the standards of the IGF. And then once Anya gives the green light, then we go ahead with supporting an NRI. And we uh, support NRIs in developing countries and in economies in transition, but not in uh, industrial countries. 
we do make an exception with Eurodic because Eurodic provides some funding for fellowships from economies in transition. But we have this year, for instance, if I just look at the figures, we have uh, supported uh, 31 national initiatives and nine regional and sub-regional IGFs and spent a total of 97,000 US dollars on NRIs. And over the years, we have spent more than $400,000 in support of the NRIs. But obviously, there is more money needed, and we see our contribution. It's relatively modest of $2,000 for a national and 3500 for a regional or sub-regional IGF. So it's less than what you were able to provide as IGF secretariat. But nevertheless, I think the feedback we get, it's kind of seed money that helps many of them to get started. But one, and Chris pointed out, we had this discussion in the IGF SA at General Assembly today. It was also felt that maybe we should be better at documenting the impact. And I think uh, Barak gave an excellent example of what impact you can have at the national level. And that might also help to attract donors when we can actually show how good it is. And there we have to get better. And we encourage you all to send us stories of impact, pictures, videos. People like videos on the whole if you can tell us a good story. And I always used to say good internet governance begins at home. And I think uh, the NRIs are here indeed where the good internet governance begins. And many speakers have pointed it out how you can have a direct impact at the national level. Once again, thank you for this session. Very interesting discussion. Uh, thank you very much, Marcus. And also thank you very much to the IGFSA. I mean, they actually filled a hole that we had on how people could make small donations towards the IGF. And with our UN Trust Fund, the process was rather complicated. So donating $20 wouldn't be worth it in the end because of the costs involved. And so they filled that particular hole. And there's no such thing as a small donation. And $2,000 towards an NRI is very, very helpful. It can provide a room, um, facilities for the day or the, or the two days, and also helping people come from outside of the city, of the city to come to the um, national meeting or even the regional meeting. Thank you. Uh, the next part of the agenda is um, we're still continuing on the theme of the funding. Um, this year, as I said, this is the first year that we had started um, the um, small grants that we were able to give to the national and regional initiatives. And one of the problems that we realized is that most of the national and regional initiatives don't have a legal structure. And since we could, could not just give, we could only give money to some place that had a legal structure, had bank accounts and et cetera. And I feel that this is also the same thing with all the other donors that we do have to have, uh, NRIs do have to start forming legal structures. And this is also compounded um, by the fact that different countries have got different rules and regulations. Um, for setting up not-for-profit bank accounts and et cetera. So it is rather a complex problem, especially for small organizations who cannot have lawyers, you know, come in and advise them on the legal structure. But as we are um, here to learn from each other and to um, share good practices, uh, we have the um, Italian IGF who can um, tell us a bit about how they went about it, and then we can have a question and answer session afterwards. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been asked by the Italian IGF to uh, make a work on the legal structure because the the IGF in Italy exists since many years 
and uh, since 2008 and has never been formalized. So every year is uh, struggling um, and uh, have to go through the existing organization. So it means that, for instance, if it's done like, like this year was made by the University of Turin with the Politecnico, then uh, all the money has to go through the Politecnico of Turin uh, and um, this create all the problems that you can imagine. And then next year you have to start again from scratch. So um, we hoped for years to, that the, this problem could be solved by the government. We have asked many times to the various potential institutional partners to take over and to take the leadership on that, but unfortunately, um, as you know, Italy is a very divided country. Governments are not, unfortunately, very stable over the time. So we have discussed at least, we have done 12 IGF, uh, Italian IGF, and I think that we have discussed with at least uh, 20 ministers, and uh, <laughs> we have not get out from the, the problem. Um, you go to the next, yes. Um, so last year uh, at the IGF in uh, Tur in um, uh, in Rome, and even before at the IGF that was made in Bologna, all the last three has been organized by university because university have a certain autonomy, they have the infrastructure, so they are the easiest to to deal with that. Um, we we started to work on the idea to have um, uh, an association uh, bottom up to be created and we started to work on uh, some statutes that look for us um, interesting so we put together the brazilian cgi statutes the cmo um, cdig um, uh, status the eurodig status etc etc um, the cdig we find very complicated I have to say, so <laughs> we look for something simpler than that. Um, the CGI the, the difficulty is that um, has been established by a law, so it's easier because uh, this is something that has been accredited through the parliament. Um, in, this is not our case, so we are we are looking for something that is in the middle. The main problem that we found uh, was the fact that in the Italian law, the multi-stakeholder doesn't exist. So if you have to fit a multi-stakeholder uh, legal association in the legal framework of Italy, you, uh, you don't know how to do it because this is not uh, recognized. Because normally, if there are, there are governments or governmental bodies, they have, cannot have the same weight than individuals or association or uh, companies, etc. Et so we have to invent something that uh, could fit into the Italian regulation uh, without uh, infringing the law, but respecting the multi-stakeholder principle. Um, so we create, we we worked on a statutes for a non-profit association, bottom-up created, where in any case we try to um, respect the multi-stakeholderism. So each constituency will vote for its own representative. And each constituency will have a certain number of seats um, in the final uh, executive body of the association. So this uh, we, a status has been approved. There's been uh, three conference calls over the years, uh, over the last year, to discuss about the, the status. A public assembly in Turin um, was discussing the final outcome of this, and there was still some modification, and then uh, before the end of the year, hopefully, we will go to the notary because we have to go to the notary to, to formalize that and we will start to be operational next year. So hopefully, uh, in, um, in the next, uh, in the next um, IGF 2020 in Italy, will be or organized directly by this association, even if we will, of course, piggyback on uh, some national um, entity that can support and host uh, the initiative. Because one of the other uh, decision was that because Italy is a very decentralized country, uh, every year we go, try to go in a different place because if you go all, if you do all in Rome, then people from Milan is not doesn't felt represented. The people from the south, etc. Et so, so, in fact, next year we hope to go to the south. Uh, if it will work, we go to Calabria. Um, so, in this new body, we will, will be a multi-stakeholder representation. 
Um, and we has been made in a way that in case then government or parliament want to transform this into a stable organization, uh, the, the status is already there. The, the principle of separation and res, um, represented, representation are there, so it will be uh, possible to do it easily. And the, the last problem, of course, that has to be a self-financed association until uh, there will be not funding, uh, stable funding from some other sources. Um, what we expect is that uh, this association will be important because it could be a, a unique entry point for IGF Global, for Eurodig, and for institutions dealing with internet governance. At the moment, this doesn't exist. The parliament, as you remember, some years ago, they worked on a charter of uh, internet rights that uh, was very important, but remained a unique case. And the parliament, even the parliament, does not follow up with that. They, are, they approved, but there is no implementation and no body in charge of that. Um, will be a place where all stakeholders on equal footing could, dis uh, could discuss and take decision by consensus to convey Italian position to uh, internet governance bodies. And, uh, of course, we try to do this um, in association with the, uh, all the bodies and the governmental representatives that are already involved in the process. The next um, step for this process after the constitution of the association will be to, to contribute to the next uh, Eurodig that will take place in uh, Trieste, as you probably know, uh, on June 10, 12. So will be the first edition of Eurodig hosted in Italy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Akamon. And your, fly, your slides and your presentation also showed how you looked at the different models out there. So we were learning from each other, for your learning from the other MRIs, and which is also very good. Um, does anybody have any questions for Giacomo on how this was done? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much, Oksana Prihotka, Ukraine, uh, member of steering committee of Ukrainian IGF and observer of youth uh, Ukrainian IGF. Um, thank you very much for this very important uh, um, presentation. Uh, in Ukraine, we also are thinking about the creation of legal structure. But actually, I have a question regarding mm -hmm. youth uh, initiatives. What do you think uh, how to formalize such initiatives and the very important issue about financing of uh, youth initiatives. Um, we um, very support the decision of IGFSA to allocate money to main uh, national IGF uh, with advice to share some funds with, uh, um, uh, with national youth IGF initiative. Because unfortunately we have uh, examples when uh, money for any use IGF uh, initiatives uh, are used in an improper way by different platforms or e any initiatives. Uh, do you have any advices? Uh, it's very important to have uh, demand uh, to uh, include financial issues in uh, the um, official report to IGF, IGF secretariat. Do you have any advices for reporting uh, about use uh, IGFs? Thank you. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? And going once. This is your chance. <laughs> OK. Yes. Um, Oksana, you touch a point that the, it's, I think, the weak point of the multi-stakeholderism. When you, when you start to discuss about who represents who and who is legitimate who, we all know that this, that this is the, the hardest point of the uh, multi-stakeholder. Mm -hmm. So what is important is that the process is done in good faith by all the parties. And then by approximation, you try to find the best possible solution and the best possible legitimation. 
Um, unfortunately, as you know, Italy is a very polarized country. We like to dispute each other. This is our characteristic. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, I have to uh, take care of that. And um, so it will, will be complicated. We have to go through discussions, and I hope that we will be successful. What happened, just to answer to your specific question about the youth representation, is that um, because it has been done in many cases with universities, we have been lucky that, for instance, uh, this year, the University of Bologna uh, bring the whole course of internet governance studies from Bologna University to uh, Turin, and they attended to one day to the session about young people. Uh, there were other communities that uh, were supposed to participate, but they didn't show up for various reasons. But every year, the problem is the challenge every year, you, you need to renew the funding, you need to renew the alliances, you need to renew the link with the professor that bring his students, you need to find the money, etc. So This is why we want to have something, a tool that will allow us to be more long-term thinking. That was the struggle that the IGF Global has done through years, and it's never ended, as you know. So it will be a renew, continued renewal process. Thank you. Uh, Mary, please. Thank you very much. My name is Mary Uduma. I'm from Nigeria, coordinator for Nigerian uh, IGF as well as the West African IGF. I'm also involved in the African IGF. Um, to answer her question concerning youth, um, when, when we are putting, up, putting out our budget for the year, we include the youth uh, NIGF Youth IGF. So we fund from a uh, collective fund from uh, wh whoever we are sending um, uh, requests for sponsorship. If we are requesting for sponsorship, we we'll also include the fact that we are going to conduct Youth IGF. And so we share most of the, of, um, we bear most of the burden for the youth. Uh, and in West Africa as well, uh, is what we are also uh, doing. At African level, African Union has even taken it up to the point of launching the African Youth IGF. So um, generally, so we, we, we just have to uh, budget for the Youth IGF and support the Youth IGF as they hold their program. But most time we ask them to bring reports from their program and uh, we include it in our report. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mary, for sharing your experiences. Um, do we have any? Yes. Oh, yes, yeah. please do. Just a comment around this, uh, mm -hmm. the youth initiatives that are taking place around the world. It's true that they sometimes face the issue that they are not being supported in terms of funding because they are not included as part of the national or the regional IGFs. But I have to say that um, even when they are not, these uh, young people find a way to get it, and then they are part of the national and the regional IGF, organizing also those uh, uh, NRIs. So it's a pity that sometimes we are not seeing that they are not just others. They are included in the NIRs. And if we support them from the beginning, as, as our colleague just said, they are part of it. They're going to be like even motivated, more motivated to actually feel that they are part of the of the game. So I think it's a pity that and it's an opportunity that we have now and we cannot miss this opportunity. Thank you. No, thank you. Well said. Yes, and we have to wrap up uh, very soon, but yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Wisdom Donko. I'm from Ghana. Um, I'm the president and CEO of uh, Africa Open Data and the Internet Research Foundation. Uh, I just want to find out uh, from Anja uh, if what is the secretary doing? Uh, we have a lot of NGOs out there who are doing uh, uh, work one way or the other related to uh, internet. Uh, example is my organization now. Uh, we are very much into uh, internet governance, capacity building, training, innovation, and, and all that. And we are currently in about 11 African countries. Uh, we had um, a conference um, on Africa geospatial data and internet conference. And then um, 
we brought together NASA and all those other big organizations, including the FAO, UNDP, and the World Bank, and others. Um, they have a lot of funding uh, for this kind of community programs. So I just want to see how can we also, or how can uh, the IGF recognize such uh, NGOs, bring them on board uh, to support in some of the work that uh, you are doing. Example, we had funding and we were able to uh, flew in about 150 uh, Africans uh, to the conference that we had in uh, Accra. And the next conference is going to be in Uganda, and then we are looking at doing the same. And uh, so I, I just want to see how we can work to your how you can recognize some of these NGOs uh, to also help uh, in the process. Yes, thank you very much, Wisdom, for a very good question. It is true, the more you work in this community, the more you realize how many stakeholders are doing an excellent job in very challenging conditions. And uh, Ghana is definitely one of the examples. Many of the NGOs there, um, I had the opportunity to also speak with Wisdom when I was in the Gambia for the West African IGF more on this subject, and he kind of practically told me what they're doing, which is very fascinating. And like, I think on a global level, it's um, more difficult to see that, but when you're on a local level, then you see actually how the application of technology is changing lives of people. So I talked to Wisdom how the agriculture is being completely changed in Ghana, the health sector and so on. I think the IGF as such is a very broad concept, as you know, and allows for the involvement of individual stakeholders. So whether it's through the national IGF, which I think is one of the effective ways, or through the set of dynamic coalitions that are working on a particular subject and are also receiving a lot of attention through the best practice forums. The IGS, I guess, key objective is, first of all, networking, and I think that's very beneficial for all the stakeholders. So those NGOs through the IGF can engage with similar organizations around the world that are doing similar projects and have similar objectives, and hopefully with joint efforts to achieve even more than they're achieving now. But Wisdom, I think if you have any ideas or concepts, as you know, our office is more than welcome to sit with you and uh, rethink those ideas, see whether they fit under the project's mandate and objectives, and uh, take it on from there to, to implement. And also just a quick note on the youth IGFs. Before um, I sign out from here, my takeaway from this meeting is that we have to write more. Um, and I also had a couple of bilateral meetings with, with some NRI. So for example, colleagues from South Sudan are here. They also told me we need more material that, um, that presents the good practices from other NRIs. So I guess that 2020 could be in light of writing, recognizing good practices, and uh, sharing it with, with other NRIs and beyond with the community. So this compendium, it's actually an idea that came from our director, uh, is probably the very first starting point that's going to uh, show the key policy areas that NRIs are discussing, but also the impact on the community and the outcomes you leave. The youth IGFs are also explained well in a publication we did two years ago. I think it's time to update that publication because the network since the past two years grew. But as you know, we recognize four models just to bring clarity uh, on this field and the integration of the youth in um, the national IGFs, the regional IGFs, and other networks in the country is extremely important. Youth is important to have, but having them discussing their own matters in their own silos doesn't benefit anyone, especially not them. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we have to wrap up now. Um, we'll hang around for a few more minutes afterwards. We can meet outside if you want to talk. Um, but let's just find out if they have any final words from our director or the chair. Uh, no, Chengtai, it's, uh, it's an inspiring, very informative experience for, for me personally and, of course, for the IGF team. And I can assure you that what you have said and shared uh, certainly reinforce our determination to enhance the national regional IG, of course. Thank you.
just thank you. And as Vint would say, see you on the net. With sincere thank you. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>